as American female athletes are bravely protesting America, Afghan female athletes are getting as far away from Afghanistan as possible to avoid being forced to dress like frumpy ninjas at best, or at worst, being tortured, raped, and killed. Reuters reports. Afghan karate champion Mina Asadi pounds the heavy bag as part of her training routine, but she fears female athletes still in her homeland may have already lost their fight to compete, now that the Taliban are back in power. Mina left Afghanistan when she was 12 and went to Pakistan. She went to Pakistan, she left one Sharia-compliant hellhole and moved to another Sharia-compliant hellhole? where she started karate training and later represented Afghanistan in the 2010 South Asian Games. She returned to Kabul the next year and opened a fight club. What? You do not talk about fight club. But was forced to flee a second time due to violence and ended up in Indonesia with her husband and then one-year-old daughter. Wait, she went to Indonesia? A third Sharia-compliant hellhole? Let's recap. She went from Sharia-compliant hellhole Afghanistan to Sharia-compliant hellhole Pakistan. Then she went back to Sharia-compliant hellhole Afghanistan, couldn't take it, and moved to Sharia-compliant hellhole Indonesia. But notice, each country she goes to is a little less Sharia-compliant. So you've got Afghanistan, which is trying to be fully Sharia-compliant. She didn't like that, so she went to Pakistan, which is a little less Sharia-compliant. Then, when she couldn't take Pakistan or Afghanistan, she went to Indonesia, which is even less Sharia compliant. Seems like she's trying to figure out exactly how much Sharia she can take. But back to this article, I feel miserable. Yeah, it's the Sharia. If you spell Sharia backwards, what does it spell? Miserable. I lost my hope and the people of my country lost their hope too. Mina told Reuters in a studio in Sisarua, a town south of Jakarta where she teaches karate to refugees who, like her, hope to resettle in a third country. Notice, Islam does such a terrible job making countries where people actually want to live that you can have a target audience composed entirely of people who want to resettle in a third country. It's assumed that after you leave one Sharia-compliant hellhole, you're going to move to another Sharia-compliant hellhole, but you're not going to like that Sharia-compliant hellhole either. So you're going to want to resettle in a third country. What do you do while you're waiting for your papers to go through? Hey, learn karate. When the Taliban ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001, their strict interpretation of Islamic law i.e. the only interpretation of Islamic law, sometimes brutally enforced, dictated that women could not work and girls could not go to school. Women had to cover their faces and be accompanied by a male relative to venture out of their homes. Ever notice that these countries that are composed almost entirely of Muslims make laws saying that a woman can't go outside of her house without a man to protect her? Protect her from whom? Why don't they trust Muslim men around women? With the Taliban back in Kabul, Mina is fearful of what that means for the progress made by her compatriots. All the achievement and values are destroyed, and this would be a dark moment for the people, especially for women and girls, said the 28-year-old, who is also a member of the Hazara minority. This week, Taekwondo athlete Zakia Kudadadi had her dreams shattered of becoming Afghanistan's first female competitor at the Paralympic Games due to the turmoil in Kabul. Everything is finished for women athletes, said Mina, who was the sole female athlete representing Afghanistan at the 2012 South Asian Karate Championship, where she won two silver medals. Taliban leaders have tried to reassure Afghans and the international community that girls and women would have the right to an education and to work, but Mina and others are skeptical. I wonder why. They are the extremist party, and they don't believe in human rights or rights of women, said Mina. Already there have been reports that some women were ordered from their jobs as the Taliban advanced across Afghanistan. They will never change. They are the same Taliban. They certainly are. The majority of Afghan refugees in Indonesia are Hazara, 
who have been targeted for decades by Sunni militants, including the Taliban and Islamic State, for their ethnicity and mostly Shiite religious beliefs. They are the same Taliban. The beliefs of Taliban jihadis haven't changed in the past 20 years. The only difference between Taliban 1.0 and Taliban 2.0 is that Taliban 2.0 is a bit more social media savvy. Taliban 1.0 did not care what anyone thought about them, and they didn't stay in power long. Taliban 2.0 understands that if they want to stay in power, they need to project a better image. But if you look at their general strategy, all they're doing is saying that they've changed while doing the exact same things they did before. They're doing the same things that Taliban 1.0 did, but they're saying that they're not doing them. It's as if they looked at Western politicians and said, you know what? These Western politicians say one thing and then do the exact opposite, and people fall for it. How can we make this work for us? I know, let's oppress everyone, but go on Twitter and say that we're not oppressing anyone. Now, this is one of those tactics that if you saw it on paper, you'd think this will never work, even though history shows that it does work. Like it or not, leaders saying one thing but doing something completely different works quite well for leaders. And saying one thing but doing something completely different is also 100% halal certified. It's called smiling in our faces while cursing us in their hearts. So, hello Taliban 2.0 and your press conferences and Twitter updates. Goodbye, everything that was ever remotely good in Afghanistan. As for the female athletes in Afghanistan, I guess we'll see you in Indonesia or Canada or the US or Europe if you can get past the terrorists standing guard outside the airport. This is a part of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?